Hello, men, this is Chris with the Age of Reason. And hello, women, the few women who chime in around here and happen to listen. Surely if you're a woman listening to this channel, then you're probably not completely fucked in the head. And likewise, if you're a man listening to this channel, you're likely not completely fucked in the head. Today's show is just uh, a couple mental meanderings that have been going through my head for quite a while. A lot of times I have my best thoughts currently when I'm at work, when I'm stuck behind the machine doing the same thing over and over and over again. These, these thoughts just start while I'm doing my job and I trail off all over the place with them. And with that, you know, I, there's also a guy at work that I talk to. Um, I don't know why, but uh, me and him have a really good, really good uh, connection communicating with each other. He's, he's a great guy. And, uh, yeah, I, I just uh, go out of my way sometimes and give him a holler over there. And we chop it up for a little bit. And so one of the things that I was talking to him about recently was, uh, well, we started talking about COVID life, you know, what I've been calling Operation COVID-19 because it is a uh, government uh, corporatized operation against the people, which will change the way that you do business and change the way that you earn and spend money and uh, every er, it's it, it's entirely about money first and foremost as i've said before your your so-called rights they come from money so i mean of course you have these inherited rights being born in your body you, know, you have a right to defend yourself you have a right to hunt for food you have a right to find and consume fresh water you, know, you have a right to breathe free air clean air uh, but you know those are the obvious things outside of that everything that uh, we we exist within is a a corporatized world a corporatocracy where money provides you the luxuries which you claim to be your freedoms or your culture or things like that you have the freedom to buy what you want to buy. You have the freedom to hoard what you want to hoard. But anyway, I don't even know how I steered into all that. I'm trying to get these thoughts down. So I'm just going to kind of cut to the chase on them and put them out there. Because that's what I'm doing. That's what I do. I, I do a lot of just uh, mental digestion, you know, putting things out that go through my mind. I call these things mental snacks, food for thought. If you've never thought about that phrase, food for thought, well, it's something to make you think, something to pique your mental appetite. So we're talking about COVID life and things like that, and uh, I had brought up um, some of these, uh, fake celebrity deaths and things, and he asked me, uh, how I felt about 9-11, and, uh, anyway, I just want to jump off with what I was talking to him about. So, at the start of this whole so-called COVID, you know, which started off as, uh, coronavirus, and then was rapidly altered to become COVID-19, at the start of all this, one of the first big headlines that swept the minds of the masses was the alleged death of Kobe Bryant. And this was well, well planned for something uh, started off, starting off with the name Corona virus, because Kobe is a word that means king. Yes, that's right, it does, too. Uh, all you have to do is 
Think about uh, Kobe beef, Kobe beef, the Japanese slice of steak, which is said to be the, the most delicious, tastiest, most perfect slice of, of beef that you'll ever get. It's the kingly form of beef, Kobe Bryant, Kobe beef. Okay, do you see how they did this? Kobe, Corona, who wears the crown? The king. What is the crown? The corona. The coronation is the crowning of the king or the queen. And so they, they chose this personality for that one reason. But then they chose to use him with this alleged death, which I, I don't think that he's dead. But they, they staged this media report that he died and he fell down out of the sky from a helicopter, in a helicopter. But this has a lot of significance because he was known as the Black Mamba. Okay, Kobe Bryant, the Black Mamba. Well, what's the Black Mamba? What's a Mamba? It's a big fucking snake right okay and of course in the bible uh, and all of the the religious texts uh, satan is referred to as a snake a serpent well, the mamba is certainly a serpent so we saw kobe bryant allegedly <clears throat> pardon me, fall from the sky. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as a lightning fall from heaven. Luke 10, 18. This is all in the Bible. And he said unto them, different version, I beheld Satan fallen as lightning from heaven. The AMP version of the Bible. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. Okay. All these different variations of the Bible have said the same thing concerning Satan touching down on earth. Okay. Satan touching down on earth. He came to the earth. As a bolt of lightning, he fell from the sky. So in this case, we have a new, <clears throat> pardon me, a new transliteration of it, a new version of it, where the black mamba fell from the sky. You see how they do this? Am I just crazy for thinking like this or what? Again, these are just mental thoughts, you know, mental snacks, things that go through my head. But as you observe this wicked reality that they give us because it's completely contrived through their media it's all created as you observe it and you 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 retain various tidbits of biblical knowledge that you've picked up over the years or if you've read the bible over and over and over again then you certainly get these things really quick but if you're somebody like me who's who's read it once or twice um and certainly paid attention to various um parts from it then you know you start to put these correlations together and i don't know if i've found anyone else putting this together like this and if somebody else has an excellent then i, I feel as though i might be on the right path with something <clears throat> because certainly i'm not at much of anything else <laughs> but um so we have the black mamba Colby Bryant, the king falling from the sky, the, the black snake falling from the sky. Okay. Now, in the case of the Bible, uh, Satan was alleged to be the most beautiful angel uh, who was uh, a musician. Uh, I don't know enough about it. You know, maybe he heralded the horns. You know, I, I don't know this much about it, but it's just what I learned about it through life. So in this case, they had to use a star 
because an angel is a an angle of light so a star a celebrity they had to use a star to make this shining impact on the world on the minds of people uh, so they, they they selected him with his name that just happens to be Kobe Kobe Bryant Kobe beef King during a time of coronavirus corona crown and he falls down from the sky the same way you know uh, transliterally you know uh, not the same but we we're, we're making a trans transcend transcendation or we're transcending it here um from lightning to uh, the symbolism of uh, a helicopter crash and so what has happened since this kobe bryant so-called death during the so-called Corona virus, the virus of the crown. Um, what has happened now, so far, in in the world? Uh, maybe not necessarily the world, but at least here in the United States. What has happened? Well, we've seen a whole lot of societal, social upheaval, and um, we're seeing a lot of this uh, this uh, black-minded anger and resentment and bitterness and hatred and animosity being fomented through the media the media is a simple simple yet powerful tool that none of us have control over we have our outlet here or there for the, the small minority uh, that may happen to hear what we have to say or think but the media machine, of course, is the, the generator of all of these woes and uh, agonies and antagonizations. So during all this time now, we've had numerous so-called uh, black men dying at the hands of cops. We've had black women dying at the hands of cops. We've had the, this huge uh, race war mindset being promulgated through the masses nobody can think nobody can think you know, everyone's terrified of being called racist even though most people have never been racist a day in their lives that goes white and black you know uh, blacks got to deal with uh being called a coon or something like that if they say look man this is fucking retarded life's not that fucking bad pay attention and of course then you get the the whites who are just fucking explicitly terrified of being referred to as, as something that they feel they've never been. And so they go out of their way to make sure that the whole world knows that they're not a racist, that they don't have a fucking clan hood in the closet. <laughs> you know, where has all of the critical thinking gone? Okay, where has it gone? Well, there is no critical thinking because everyone's swept up in the media magic. No one's taking the time to look at these signs and symbols and realizing that there is a great evil at work behind the scenes of all of these stories. And it started off simple with the black snake falling from the sky. And I'm not saying that Black people are the snake. It's a, a virus of those who have um, melanated skin, to use the proper words. But no, let's just be be uh, humble and honest here. It's it's a mental virus, a mental poison for black people. Since that event, the whole fucking so-called black world and i say so-called because we're all in this shit together like they say we're all in this fucking country we're all here in this planet or plane whatever the hell you call it we're all here you can't fucking jump off of it you got to deal with each other but so we're all here and they've used this these these events to divide even greater 
the common masses, you know, and I think that the uh, the using of the black serpent was a, a, a big fucking symbol with this. You know, I, it would have been impossible to foretell at the time that, you know, okay, the black snake fell and now there's going to be this fucking snake slithering through the societal mind of black people and they're all going to get bit and they're going to fucking lose their shit to its venom. But that's what's happening. You know, it's... It, that's how it is. It's very fucking strange, man. People allow themselves to be triggered over everything. All they do is pay attention to what the fucking... The computer screen, or TV set, or radio, or fucking Facebook pages, or, or fucking uh, Tumblr accounts, or... Uh, Reddit, they pay attention to all these fucking media sources. <clears throat> Instead of standing back for a second and saying, wait a second, I gotta look at my neighbors. Are we trying to kill each other? Oh, we're not? Fuck. What's really going on? How is it that people are still so easily swayed when everything when you're at the age of reason everything appears to be easily easily uh decoded as as a lie or a myth or a hoax but when you're not at a uh, a reasonable mind an age of reason you're fucking lost still. And I'm not even saying that I got the fucking compass that points to fucking true reality by any means. But you can't freaking take all this crap and, and just gobble it up. But still so many people do. Uh, I think I'm done with that thought. I wanted to go off with um some more fucking mask thoughts. You know, the, the fucking masking, you know, the, the, the masking is, is on. And if you're not aware of it, like, if you don't have to have a job, well, then good for you. Because if you have to work at a job right now, you are going to find that you are going to be harassed constantly over this fucking bullshit mask campaign. You know, they, they, they used the George Floyd so-called death. I don't think that he's dead either. Uh, I think that these people are very evil, though, and, and you know, will do whatever it takes to uh, help brainwash people. Kobe Bryant... Um, George Floyd, and whoever else is in these uh, so-called stories. I think most of them are fucking CIA agents. So you would never really know who the fuck they are anyhow. Um, and people think that that's crazy too, but how many people could be in the CIA that you don't even know? Hmm. Hmm. How many people... Uh, were in the military that you do know okay the military is like a uh, a public branch of uh you know the one of these societies you know these secret societies just like the freemasons is a public branch like you know they, they tell you that yeah you can join if you want to be one ask one um <clears throat> You know, they don't hide these things. You know, they call them secret societies, but they're they're not entirely secluded. You know, like uh, it's a, it's like I've said before. They always tell the truth, even when they lie. Like the line from Scarface. You know, and what the, what I think that that means is that the, they're telling you up front that they're full of shit, and you know, what they're doing is fucking wrong. <laughs> but uh. They're gonna lie about it. You just you just gotta expect to be lied on. So the masking, uh, I work in a factory, and there's there's no reason to wear any masks in a factory unless 
you really value your lungs more than you are terrified of Operation COVID-19. Because factories, of course, uh, have lots of chemicals in the air and they get on your skin and things like that. This is a steel factory and uh, I don't, it's, it's a pretty clean place. I don't have to worry about breathing in a lot of uh, chemicals at this place. But the masking agenda is just off the fucking scales. I mean, I could not even imagine working in a fucking restaurant right now. I couldn't even imagine uh, because uh, in factory life, so far, you do get a little bit more freedom to do whatever the fuck you want so far. Uh, and that means that at least you can take the fucking thing off when you get to your machine. But where I'm at right now, they, uh, they're they trying to impose that everyone has to wear the mask as soon as they enter the door. While they go through the building into the break room for the daily meeting, you have to wear your face mask there. When you leave the meeting, you've got to wear the mask all the way until you get to your machine. Then you can take it off if you like, but when you have to check your parts for consistency, then you have to put it back on because you have to leave the station, the machine station, to go to another area. So we have these little, little consistency stations in the shop, and you know they're usually uh, r really close by to your machine. And they now expect that you will put on your mask every time you leave your machine. If you gotta go take a piss, you know, they want you to wear it. If you gotta go do your consistency checks, you gotta go wear it. And none of it makes any sense, of course. And the whole ordeal slows you down because uh, everything counts. You gotta stop and goof off with a stupid fucking mask because I'm not the type who's just gonna wear it all fucking day. You gotta stop and goof off and pull this thing over your fucking face and everything else. And then then this fucking bitch tried to tell me that keeping it below my nose was not acceptable. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like, you know, who the fuck are you people? Like, no. This shit is not even in the UCC yet. You know, Uni Uniform Commercial Code. Uh, like, we're doing business here. Get the fuck out of here. The law of the land would be the uh, Bill of Rights. Um, and the Constitution, the Constitution's kind of a fucking train wreck, but the Bill of Rights, for sure, is the law of the land, and the UCC would be the law of the sea, you know, commerce. None of these uh, have outlined that anyone should ever have to wear a fucking mask for any reason. You know, we're doing business. UCC. UCC law is in, in play. And so you have all these fucking drones, especially women, though. Oh, my God, the workforce is so entirely feminized. If you don't know this yet out there, men or women, how feminized the workforce is, uh, especially when it comes to uh, supervisors and management, women are always given these management roles. And, uh, I mean, this is also why you see, like, women mayors and things like that. You know, they're a part of the managerial class. But I think that there's a reason to that. I think it's because women are typically easily led and men will easily listen to women. You know, because men have this, uh, this natural tendency to want to hear a woman out and uh, you know listen to what she has to say. It's this chivalristic, chival chivalry thing that's probably encoded in our why dna chromosome somewhere you know but it's been nothing the feminization of the workforce has been nothing but a, an absolute train wreck for production um everywhere i don't care if it's a fucking factory or a restaurant or wherever you you typically see women in roles of uh, management and sales are down production is down the morale is down. <sighs> Why? Why? For men's chivalry, uh, wanting to listen to women, uh, that's that's not enough. <laughs> uh, 
they have completely adversified, not diversified, but adversified the workforce in terms of management. Uh, and when I say adversified, they've they've added ad, they've given adversity by promoting only women to these these positions, and we see that these women are not capable of of leading properly. And this has nothing to do with uh, any kind of fucking sexual fucking uh, gender uh, rights bullshit. This is just reality. That's just reality. If you have a job uh, that is high demand, you know, you're going to need someone who can fucking think critically and, and pull the team together appropriately and accordingly. And in my experiences, the women have not been able to do that. And still, despite the cries of wage gaps for women and everything else, despite these cries in the media that there's not enough women involved in the workforce, despite these cries, we still see plenty of women promoted over men. And so anyway... Off that soapbox, back onto the masking. This all comes back to the masking because it's all these fucking women that run the goddamn place. And they're always chasing after me like they're my goddamn mother. And I'm going to tell them, look, lady, my mother already died. And get the fuck out of here. And so, like, this woman, all these women, there's three women, uh, one per uh, shift. And they all got attitudes with me because I don't wear the fucking mask right off the jump. Um... And then I don't listen to their bullshit. But uh, all these women go out of their way to fucking stalk me at my job and freaking, uh, I guess stalk isn't the right word. But they, my the woman seems to swoop down on me like a goddamn seagull from out of nowhere every time I'm freaking doing something. And she's like right up my ass about this stupid fucking mask. And uh, she, she parrots. She parrots. She parrots. It's for your safety. I said, for my safety, I said, oh, yeah, this is part of that new normal, right? She's like, yeah. And I'm thinking, lady, for my safety, listen, I am 42 years old. I think that by now I know what I am safe from and not safe from, okay? I don't need somebody to hold my hand across the street. I don't need somebody to stir my chocolate milk for me. I don't need somebody to cook my dinner and tuck me in at night, okay? I am a grown man in the age of reason. You cannot tell me what to do for my safety. But that's a big thing with this this masking campaign is these people uh, the, at, at the workforce, somewhere at the managerial class level, somewhere there are websites or pamphlets or something being given out to these people that are teaching them how to indoctrinate people to go with this. And one of the things that they, they must have written on it is, it's for your safety. Now, don't tell me about my safety. I'm wearing my freaking safety glasses and my gloves, etc. You know, like, uh, there's, there is, it's, it's like the same thing when you go to a restaurant. There is no way that you walking into the restaurant you wear the mask and then sit down and you can take it off. There's no way at all that that makes any sense for defeating any kind of fucking supposed virus. There's no way. None of it makes any sense. But it's a form of manipulative control that these people get off on right now. They're getting off on it and it's building up the shaming culture rapidly. Especially when they say, for your safety. And if you challenge that, well, what about my safety? Well, you don't care about me? There comes more shaming. Okay. This world is completely out of control right now. This fucking masking campaign is a bullshit hoax. It's a lie. The whole fucking thing is just a fucking lie. All the Black Lives Matter shit, it's a fucking lie. Everything that's happened... In this 2020 vision, it's just lies. And people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear they've been fucking lied to. They couldn't fucking handle it. There's this fucking derpy freaking honky up there who I work with. And all he does is talk about smoking fucking weed. 
Oh, I couldn't get a job in the medical field, man. I smoke too much weed, bro. Just shut the fuck up. Put the goddamn THC down. Clear your fucking foggy-ass brain. Jesus Christ, man. But that that's how you can steer these people anywhere. You legalize all their fucking bullshit, and, you know, like, you, you just watch what happens. You legalize everything and watch everyone just become the substances. You know, because people are not supposed to be the sum of what they consume, but they are. They are. You're not supposed to be the sum of what you consume, but these people are. They are their their sports ball stars. They are their rep music stars or country music stars or metal music stars. You know, they are their they're capitalized icons. These are the things that they get behind. These are the myths, the myths, the lore that they believe in. Because throughout history, there, are, there has always been myth and lore. You know, of course, it was a lot more romantic in the fucking uh, Greco Greco Roman era, you know, and they had stories of gods, you know fighting each other and throwing each other into fucking hell and fucking each other's wives. All the dramas of the gods were pretty fucking crazy, pretty fucking phenomenal. Um, but now we have the same thing with the celebrities. The celebrities are just the stars of the constellations, you know. Donald Trump is a titan. Titan sports. Don't forget that link, guys. The link titans. Titans rule the universe, you know. Donald Trump was on WWF, WWE under the brand moniker Titan Sports. These things don't ha None of these things happen by accident. Black Mamba, Black Snake falling from the sky, Satan falling from the sky. That didn't happen by accident, okay? None of this fucking shit happens by accident. None of it. And these people, they don't, you, you can't tell them anything. They don't want to hear it because they're caught up with their fucking, their, their corporatized crap, you know. They're caught up with their fucking icons and their fucking neuroses, their schizophrenias and their fucking ADHD and all the crap that they love, you know. Like, there's this guy at work who's a dad with a second baby on the way, and he's got the most obnoxious soy laugh. <laughs> and all he does when he goes to break, and I'm not criticizing because I've said before, we all got to have a, a way to unwind, but all this dude does is listen to fucking video game channels and animes, and he has the most soyish fucking laugh, and his, his hair is falling out of his head, and his foot doesn't work. He limps around, and he he looks terrible. Oh, and this isn't being critical. This is, I, I don't want to be critical. I'm not trying to hurt the guy's feelings. I'm not trying to hurt the guy's image. But he's fucking gone is the point. And he comes to work wearing this fucking manga shit all the time, you know, anime shit. He has become what he consumes. He was supposed to be more than what he consumes. He has become what he consumes. Weakness. And he's got a baby on the way. A second baby on the way. Oh my God. Look, I'm not fucking Hercules, okay? I make mistakes. Um, <laughs> you know, and uh, <laughs> there's times I don't want to fucking crawl out of bed. You know. <laughs> but I'm not fucking brain fried like this you know I'm, I'm not fucking my brain isn't turned to mush and mold and mildew somehow my critical thinking still fucking works uh, but these people that you have to deal with the people in your neighborhood so to say these are the people in your neighborhood they're not so fucking peachy are they it's not the fucking sesame street anymore is it no, it's not fucking uh, Mr. Robin's neighborhood. 
No, no, it's it's fucking uh, Grand Theft Auto real life. It's madness out there. Like I say, like the, the minds of people are just fucking gone. None of these things are by accident. None of these things. Trump surviving the virus, that's, that's his fucking titan lore. Okay, it's a part of his mythology. It's the, the mythos of Trump. Okay? I'm sure that there's probably some freaking uh, god that was poisoned and survived the poisoning. Okay? Uh, if that sounds good for you guys to jump off out there and, and do a, a search, go ahead and let us know. There was probably some fucking god that was poisoned or some agent of a god or somebody that was poisoned and survived. And that's probably what they're unfolding with this. You know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Like I say, this show is just uh, a lot of mental meandering. It's been a while since I checked in, checked in on everybody and seen how you were all doing. I throw my thumbs up and hearts in the comments, things like that. But I haven't posted any actual organic content from my own brain in some time now. But there's just so much that happens every fucking day. Like like a new story every day. <laughs> and just go through the fucking uh, Google News on your on your phone and just look at all the hogwash stories that are out there. But the what they're doing is they're telling you what what to expect, okay? Listen, I, I saw this show overnight when I was at work about Chinese death vans. So the Chinese, communist China, everyone loves communism, everyone loves China, you know, cheap goods, uh, high levels of lead in the paint and everything else. Well, what, a, what a great, great society they have over there. Thank you, communism. But anyway, uh, over there in uh, communist China, they, um, they have vans that will go to uh, the houses of people who are condemned to be put to death. And they will execute the person right there in the van, out in front of everyone in the street. <laughs> and, and there's no cries of, of anything uh, morbid or obscene about this from the J-Class or Amnesty International or anything like that. But meanwhile, they want to uh, run their ads on YouTube, particularly, about Iran being so brutal in hanging people every day but this country china just said you know what we're, we don't need to do all that it's we're gonna save some money we're just gonna drive to your fucking house when your day is is, is up and we're gonna shoot you full of this fucking poison until you die that's what they're doing out there folks and the reason why i found this video was intentional they're foreshadowing this i guarantee you they are foreshadowing this for the future okay did you think futurama was funny when bender walked into the suicide booth that was a pretty funny fucking scene it was uh ludicrous to think of back then but um i'm sure in uh, a few more years we'll have come a long way in so-called medical assisted suicide laws and uh i don't i don't think that that's a an impossibility any longer in fact i think that uh all of the shows that we have been given uh, have done nothing but foreshadow things for us just like all the comedians did they had to bring it to us with some uh, level of levity some level of comedy you know to to lighten the mood on it and then change the way that you think about it you know, sometime later so suicide booth, I think it's, uh, I think it's, I, I don't see a reason why it should not exist uh, in the future. I mean, I do not think that it should exist, but I think it'll be here. Um, how would it be done? I don't know. Well, in Futurama, what was it, like saws and shit, vaporizers, all kinds of brutality. Uh, well, I don't know. It could be anything. But I think it's coming is the point. You know, China is driving to your fucking house and you are going to go ahead and say, yeah, I'm so brainwashed, I'm not going to fight this and you can kill me now. And people are doing it. Allegedly, people are doing it. I find no reason anymore to not believe this. 
you know, some things are fucking myths and hoaxes, but uh, I think that humanity is that fucked in the head that it will just roll over and, and let Big Brother uh, take him out if need be. There was a show I did years ago about um, one of the ranting points on it was how people will easily give up their guns, you know, and, uh, you know, people will and people are, you know. Well, Uncle Sam has my best interests at heart, so he can have them. God will protect me. Okay. Okay, brother. So remember, the good Lord helps those who helps themselves. All right, guys, I think I'm done with this show. Uh, it's been really great talking, uh, getting these thoughts out. I hope they made sense to somebody out there. Hope you could sit through this, the whole thing. I think like three people listen to everything that I have to say and nothing ever gets shared. So <laughs> just uh, spitting in the wind here. Just uh echoing voice in the machine. All right, guys, this is Chris with the Age of Reason. Keep both eyes, all three eyes open at all times and pay attention. I'll catch you guys next time, all right? Bye.